Hey everyone, Shane here with eTrailer.com. Today I have a 2020 Toyota Tacoma. I'm going to walk through how to install the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver. So what our hitch is going to look like when it's installed. And you can see the cross tube is pretty much hidden behind the bumper itself. All we can really see is our receiver tube. So it really maintains a nice clean look. <clears throat> Adding a Class 3 hitch like this onto the back of your truck is going to give you a lot of different options, whether that's towing, maybe you want to put a cargo carrier on there to bring a few extra items with you or maybe you want to get a bike rack uh, because you're like our customer here and they have a tonneau cover. You don't want to put the bikes in the back of the truck because then you can't keep everything else out of the weather. Heading hitch is going to give you that option. Put a bike rack on, get the bikes outside, leave your tonneau cover covering all of your items so they stay out of the weather. Steel construction, black powder coat finish. It's going to hold up really well against rust and corrosion. Two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. Reinforced collar gives us a little extra stability there. Having the two inch by two inch as I mentioned, it's going to give you a lot of different options for hitch mount accessories. Hitch pin hole is going to be 5 8 inch in diameter. It's going to be right here. Standard 5 8 hitch pin. Pin and clip does not come with the hitch. However, they can be found here at the trailer as well. Rolled steel safety chain loops. If you're pulling a larger trailer, if it has some larger size safety chain hooks, you can see it will accommodate, accommodate those as well. Now let's go ahead and get down on the ground. I'll give you some weight capacities and measurements. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost part of the bumper, it's going to be about four inches. The number's important for any of your hitch mount accessories like your cargo carriers and bike racks that fold up. You want to make sure they're not going to make contact. From the ground to the top innermost part of the receiver tube is about 18 and a quarter inches, 18 and a half inches actually. So you know we have plenty of height for different hitch mount accessories like your ball mounts. Uh, I will recommend if you tow different size trailers, get an adjustable ball mount so you can adjust it to the different heights of those uh, the couplers on the trailers. You can find different kinds here at E-Trailer. As far as our weight capacities go, we're gonna have a 900 pound max tongue weight. It's gonna be the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver too. So whether you're putting the trailer on, bike racks, cargo carrier, whatever it may be, make sure you're not exceeding that. We're gonna have a 6,000 pound gross trailer weight, which is a trailer plus load included. Can use weight distribution with this hitch, Tongue weight is going to stay the same, however, trailer weight is going to go up to 8,000 pounds. Always recommend checking the owner's manual of the vehicle. Make sure the vehicle can withstand that amount of weight. You're going to go with the lowest number between the vehicle and what the hitch can handle. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's walk through how to get it installed. Start your installation. You're going to have two weld nuts on each side. They're going to be open. Spray some lubricant in there, some cleaner. Take a tube brush. If you don't have one, you can find one here at e-trailer. We need to make sure we clean those threads out really well. Take one of your bolts that come in your kit, and you want to be able to hand thread that bolt in there. Once you can hand thread it in there, then you know you've got them cleaned out well enough. Next, we're going to come to the center of our vehicle underneath. You're going to have a hole right here in the middle. These two holes are the ones we're going to be using. We're going to take a pull wire, we're going to feed it through one of them towards the outside, we're going to file the frame rail, and right here at the end there's a hole. When that wire comes out, we're going to put on a spacer block. And then thread on a carriage bolt. Feed it into the hole. You're going to have to work with it, but we need to get it to drop out of that hole. So what I found was put the spacer block on, put the bolt on, slide the spacer block onto the bolt, feed them both in the hole at the same time. There's actually a couple of bolts that hang down from up top that stuff gets caught on. So if for some reason you can't get them both in at the same time and you pop the spacer block off, once you get it past that bolt, you stick your finger up in there and rotate it and then pull the bolt through the spacer block and then it'll come down through the hole. 
Now with the next set of hands, we'll raise our hitch into position. We're going to feed our pull wires through the corresponding holes in the hitch. Next, we're going to take a conical tooth washer, put it on the hex bolt. You're going to make sure the teeth are facing up towards the hitch. We're going to get one on each side to hold our hitch into place. If for some reason you get it up there and it's tight, take a soft blow hammer and hit it right on this back side, you'll be able to line up the holes here on the frame rails. Once you get your four bolts, two bolts on each side, we'll come to our center ones. We'll take off our wires, put on a flange nut. We can come back and tighten everything down. Three quarter inch socket, we'll tighten all of our hardware and we'll come back and we'll torque it to the specification and instructions. Once you have everything torqued down, you're ready to go. It's going to do it for a look at and installation on the Curt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on a 2020 Toyota Tacoma.